The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome, welcome to worship uh, on this Lord's Day. If you are accustomed to be sitting in these pews, know that you are welcome uh, as we broadcast the service today. And if you are listening in but not a, a resident of Worcester or not normally in our congregation, please know that there's a special welcome to you. Uh, we are grateful to each and every one of you for, for joining us uh, in these times of worship. I want, to, um, I want to commend our community for its ongoing uh, lifting up of the Black Lives Matter uh, movement and petitioning and standing on the street corner downtown uh, to show solidarity, support, uh, and an eagerness, an urgency to end the systemic racism that has gripped our nation since its earliest days. So let, let us do our best to make that, uh, this generation, the last one to deal with these issues, at least as seriously uh, as we have been up to this point. I want to thank each and every one of you that filled a care package, a care bag, uh, full of goodies for the many students that we still have on campus, especially our international students. I'm not sure that we all have been aware that uh, just up the street on our college campus, uh, we've had many students who have not been able to make it home if they're foreign, uh, there are travel restrictions, but also uh, there are some concerns about uh, being able to return uh, given the uh, visa situation going on in our country right now. So lots of bags, I think 100 bags were packed, uh, close to $600 of monetary donations. And uh, the outpouring of thanks is huge. And students have been picking those up uh, all this past week. So thank you very much. We have a second opportunity to benefit our college students. The uh, International Student Services of the College, Wayne Center for the Arts, and Main Street Worcester are teaming up for a fun activity for the College of Worcester students. They uh, are going to be, they're going to be given colored chalk and allowed to chalk and decorate downtown Worcester just outside the Wayne Center uh, for the Arts. And uh, the uh, donations of chalk are being accepted right now up until the 8th of July. And you can leave that in boxes just right outside the door of the Wayne uh, County Center for the Arts. So I do hope you uh, participate generously in this and then take a walk downtown and see what uh, wonderful art our college students have created. Our beautiful flowers this morning are donated by Sid and Fran Kammer, and they are donated in honor of all of the birthday, birthdays of July. So if you're one of those July birthdays, know that you are being celebrated this day in a beautiful bouquet of flowers. At this time, let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Good morning. The service music today comes from three masters of the late 19th century from Europe and Great Britain. First of all, uh, an intermezzo, which forms the middle movement of a, an organ sonata by the German romantic composer Joseph Reinberger. Second, for the musical offering, a piano duo written by C. Hubert H. Perry, the British composer we heard from last week. And finally, the Dubois Toccata. You've heard the Toccata in other contexts probably from the Italian for to touch, famous ones by Bach, of course, in the Vidor Fifth Symphony. But every French composer worth his salt has at least one Toccata in his repertoire. Uh, today, you'll hear that version by the French organist Theodore Dubois. Our guest musicians today are Carolyn Rice, whom you've heard already either on the piano or the flute, and also James West, a professor of biochemistry at the College of Worcester. We thank them both for their contribution to the service today.
I invite you to join me in our call to worship. God invites all who are weary to come. Come now with the burdens of work, home, and community. God promises to give us rest. God invites all who are weary to come. Come now with the burdens of illness, of fear, of hopelessness. God promises to give us rest. God invites all who are weary to come. Come with the burdens of anger, of prejudice, of alienation. God promises to give us rest. God invites all who are weary to come to lay down their burdens and find peace. We gather in hope and joy to rest in God. Let us pray. Grant us wisdom, O God, not only to discern the time in which we live, but to live faithfully within them. May we serve well in the responsibilities and opportunities you gently lay upon our shoulders. May we find rest in you along the way of Jesus. Amen. Please join in our prayer of confession. God of grace and truth, we confess that we are masters of deception. We say that we love peace, but our actions lead to conflict and discord. We say that we have trust in you, but expect our own resources to secure our futures. We say that we mean well, but, we, but what we do betrays our self-centeredness. Gracious God, with you in hope and the promise of new beginnings, remind us today in this time that you are always here, calling us home, within us, between us, beside us, around us, and the solid rock beneath our feet. Gracious God, hear our prayers. Amen. God's gracious forgiveness always offers a new beginning. Where we lurk in the shadows, God's mercy sheds the light of renewal. Where the chaos of disregard exists, God's love brings the, new, brings the way of compassion. God says, it is good. You are good. Go forth and do good. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Hello, everybody. So my family and I just got back from a vacation to the beach, my favorite place in the world. And one of the things that we like to do at the beach is collect seashells. We like to walk along the beach and see all the different creatures and things that God has created and fill up a bucket. And sometimes as we're going along and we're filling up our bucket, our bucket gets so full that we can't carry it. It's so full that no matter how much we try to lift it up, it's so full of shells we just can't lift it. And so we have to take some shells out of our bucket, put them back in the sand, put it back in the water so that we can carry our buckets. And so then we come home and we're reminded that right now we have worries. We have friends that we can't go see. We may be worried about our family and friends that they don't get the virus and they don't get sick. We may be worried about friends and family that look different than us right now. We may be disappointed that we can't play our favorite sport right now. We may be disappointed that we can't go on our vacation right now. We might be worried about what school will look like in a few weeks. We may be worried if we get to go to school. Some of us that are older are worried about going to work, what that might look like. Maybe moms and dads are worried about that. And so it reminded me of my bucket. And every time I have a worry, I put it in my bucket. And it's eventually my bucket gets so full that I can't carry my bucket full of worries. But you know who can help us with our bucket full of worries is Jesus. Jesus is the one that can help us. He'll take out those worries out of our bucket and help us get through them if we just lean on him. He'll take out our burdens and our worries out of our bucket so that our buckets are empty. And tomorrow we'll fill up our bucket with more worries and God will say, give them to me. 
Empty out your buckets of worries. Our scripture says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So sometimes it's hard. And right now there's a lot of things that we are worried about and scared about and disappointed about. Put them in your bucket and give your bucket to God. Try it. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for emptying our buckets and being with us when we are worried and scared and we have burdens that you need to help us with. Help us to remember to give them up to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Holy God, in the midst of this ordinary time, we find ourselves seeing and experiencing many unordinary things. We exist now in a threshold space where so much is changing and so much is uncertain. We pray that you send us your peace, guide us in the ways of your grace, patience, empathy, and assurance. Even in this season of unknowns, remind us of who we are called to be, leading in the ways of love, working for equity and justice for all of creation. Gracious God, you give us the gift of community and yet we weave walls of exclusion and isolation. You give us the gift of a new day, and we spend more time unraveling justice than sowing seeds of positive pluralism and peaceful coexistence. You give us the gift of holy surprises and unimaginable beauty even in the thicket of a pandemic. And we shut our eyes and we close our ears and our hearts to the things already present and thriving. Forgive us for our frayed ends, our egos, our misguided thoughts, our prejudices. Forgive us for the ways we've been complicit in systemic racism, homophobia, sexism, ableism, and all the oppressive structures that keep us from freedom. Unravel these sins in us and fill us with radical acceptance, hospitality, and love. Divine Weaver God, this life is a tapestry of moments woven together, and we long to be weavers with you of love and justice. Today we gather across time and space, in spirit and intention, praying that you would unravel our biases, unravel our assumptions and fears, Unravel whatever it is that keeps us from you and each other. Help us weave together a better, more hopeful, and inclusive future. Amen.
Our gospel text for this morning, at first glance, may seem uh, a little bit quirky, maybe even inhospitable. Uh, these are wisdom sayings in this 11th chapter of Matthew that uh, often sort of get interpreted as, um, as a narrative. They're misunderstood as a narrative, but they're actually uh, wisdom sayings of Jesus. Because read literally, this passage would seem to scold educated, inquisitive, and skeptical minds. And I certainly don't want to be uh, pressing that. So I invite us to read and listen to this text beyond any literal interpretations, and, and let's discover if there's anything uh, imaginative that we might draw from it. And so I'm reading from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 11, uh, beginning with the 16th verse through the 19th verse, and then I will jump to verse 25 uh, through 30. Jesus has been talking when we pick up in verse 16. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come. All you that are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. These words of Jesus may be just what some of us need to hear this morning. We are four months into a worldwide onslaught of an, an invisible viral pandemic, and more than a month into a national reckoning with 400 years of slavery, white supremacy, and the resulting systemic racism and disenfranchisement of our brothers and sisters of color in our own day. These are burdens of heavy individual and corporate gravity, burdens we need to urgently address in our personal lives and in the institutional life and character of this nation. Yet even before these most recent ground-shifting events, many of us could acknowledge that burdens come in many forms, in all shapes and sizes, pressures in the workplace, tensions in the home place, can build up to where they seem unbearable. For some of us, Ominous health issues loom for ourselves and for those we love. The shadow of death threatens to fall across the paths we tread and the plans we make. Even the struggles to make financial ends meet at home may seem at times impossible. Serious, seemingly intractable problems plague our world. Wars, global environmental catastrophes, hatreds between peoples and nations, 
food shortages and economic crises, deadly diseases. There are people we know or strangers we do not know who are immediately in harm's way. When problems and worries overwhelm us, a place to lay those burdens down may be our greatest need. And finding that place may be our only salvation. And despite our modern comforts and conveniences, our fears and concerns are really not so different from those people whom Jesus encountered in his life and ministry in first century Palestine. Back then, work was hard and the future uncertain. Loved ones died young, lost to accident and disease. Praying to God or the gods sometimes brought relief, but not always. By the time the Gospel of Matthew was written, Jerusalem and its great temple had been destroyed by the Romans. The unthinkable had come to pass. Much of the established Jewish religious structure had been demolished. And among the survivors, a great struggle was underway for the heart and soul of the faith. It was in the midst of these struggles that Matthew's community found itself. The religious party known as the Pharisees was the strongest group to have survived the destruction of Jerusalem. The Pharisees sought to revitalize faith in God by maintaining a strict orthodoxy, a narrow, conservative way of practicing the religion. According to the Pharisees, the proof of the purity of one's faith was measured by the observance of and obedience to the hundreds of laws and ordinances found in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. Under this inflexible regime, God's favor and God's salvation were reduced to a system of rewards for those who lived by the rules, seeing themselves as the defenders of God in the world, the Pharisees piled up ever more dogmatic burdens on the people. To all of the personal concerns and fears that the people experienced, those same worries that trouble us today, the Pharisees added the heavy burdens of having to believe and obey the right things or else suffer community condemnation and eternal damnation. During his life, Jesus faced this powerful religious group and challenged it in every way he could on behalf of the first century people among whom he lived and the 20 centuries of people who have lived since. Instead of laying on the guilt, Jesus offered to lighten the load. Some time ago, a newspaper article reminded me of the timely relevance of Jesus' lighter yoke. The article dealt with the issue of divorce. It opened with a personal story of a woman who was rejected by her church family when she divorced her husband. In the article, several modern-day Pharisees pontificated on the sinfulness of divorce, even justifying the removal of those who had been divorced from the life and communion of the church. What a heavy and crushing burden to lay upon the shoulders of those who, for whatever reasons, end their marriages. The pain of any divorce is harsh enough. Why would we, who seek to follow the way of Jesus, not offer the arms of his loving embrace to comfort 
and console and commune with those who are hurting? The answer in Matthew's gospel is clear. Jesus calls us to dance with those who dance. He urges us to mourn with those who mourn. And through us, Jesus invites any and all to come and lay their burdens down. The one who is gentle and humble in heart will give you rest. And we, who seek to follow that gentle and humble one, are called to be rest givers and burden lighteners for others. I came across an internet article, though I have no scientific confirmation for this, that explained why geese fly in a V formation. The article said that as each bird flaps its wings, it creates lift for the bird behind it. The whole flock adds at least 70% greater flying range than one bird flying alone. As the lead bird tires, it rotates to the back of the V, and another bird shoulders the burden of flying the lead. The honking of the birds at the back encourages the one up front. And if a goose gets sick or injured and has to fall out of the formation, two geese fall out with it and follow the wounded bird to the ground, staying with it until it can fly again or dies. Matthew says, the yoke is easy and the burden is light because we do not shoulder yokes or burdens alone. Real burdens must be shared burdens. And our most important responsibilities, our yokes, need to be shared yokes. God does not go it alone. The diversity of creation is evidence for that. As God's children, we cannot go it alone either. And most especially in this time of pandemic fear and long overdue racial reckoning and reconciliation, we are the body of Christ in the world. And as this local manifestation of that worldwide body we gather together as a congregation, even when we must do it at a distance. Some of us gather in our safe places on Sunday mornings full of joy, and to that we say, thanks be to God. Others of us come in deep pain, carrying heavy burdens. The gospel, the good news that Jesus lived and taught, is that, we, is that we are called to share one another's burdens. Whether we are being helped or helping, we are called to carry the load. Our great hope is that by sharing these burdens, we truly discover that the yoke becomes easier and the burden is indeed lightened. If you find yourself carrying the weight of the world today, Jesus invites you to set it down and join this gathering of fellow travelers along the up and down journey that is life and when it is time to carry on, you will not be carrying alone. May you receive this good hope 
that all burdens are being made light. And may you find rest for your soul. Amen. Okay. As we continue to live into these times of COVID-19, of the deep, urgent necessity of getting racism, supremacy out of our systems, out of our organizations nationally and locally, I do hope that we might have a sense that we are surrounded by God's grace, Christ-like love, that we might have a sense of hope, that we might indeed pray together, O Christ, surround. We are all carrying burdens of one kind or another. They change as our life circumstances change. But it is part of our shared humanity that there are times that get us down and times that we feel weighed down. And it is then that I hope we can remember we are invited to lay them down. To trust that the one who cares more deeply for us than we could ever know will shoulder it up. And not just in a sort of a metaphorical kind of way, but in a concrete way as we help one another. 
carry on. Carry on together. And as we leave our worship together this day, go knowing that you are embraced in the steadfast love of God forever, that you are redeemed in the grace of Jesus Christ now and always, and that together we are being empowered for faithful witness and loving service this and every day of our lives. And may God's hope, peace, joy, and love abide with you this day and forevermore. Thank you.